What if I told you that GLP-1 medications could prevent tens of thousands of cases of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and other comorbidities, yet at the current prices, they're too expensive to be considered cost-effective? A new study breaks down why these life-changing medications remain out of reach from many and what needs to change. Welcome to The Downsized. If you're new to our channel, I'm Christopher Durham, and my wife Lorraine and I have been on an incredible adventure with GLP-1s. Together, we've lost over 150 pounds. I started my adventure in September of 2023, and since then, I've lost 100 pounds, going from struggling with my weight for years to feeling healthier than I have in decades. Blood pressure normal, cholesterol normal, sleep apnea gone. It's life-changing. But here's the reality. We've paid for every single dose out of pocket because our insurance does not cover obesity medications. And we are not alone. Millions of Americans face the same financial burdens, struggling to afford a medication that could literally save their lives. Before we get into today's topic, a quick reminder, Lorraine and I are not doctors. We're sharing our personal experiences and discussing research. But if you're considering any medical treatment, please consult a healthcare professional. And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss an update. A new study published in the JAMA Health Forum examines the cost effectiveness of GLP-1 medications. Researchers from the University of Chicago analyzed four anti-obesity medications, including trizepatide, which is sold by Ilelele as Zep bound in Manjaro, and semaglutide, which is sold by Novo Nordisk as Wagovi and Ozempic. The study measured how much these medications improve health outcomes versus how much they cost over a lifetime. Well, the results, while these drugs can prevent tens of thousands of cases of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease, their current prices make them economically unviable. To understand why these drugs aren't considered cost-effective, we need to talk about quality-adjusted life years or qualies. A quality is a measurement used in health economics to determine the value of medical interventions. It combines both the quality and the length of life added by treatment, with one quality representing one year of perfect health. The standard benchmark for cost effectiveness in the United States is $100,000 per quality. If a treatment costs less than that, it's considered a worthwhile healthcare investment. If it costs more, it's considered too expensive for the benefits it provides. Now, this is an economic measure. It's not a personal measure. We'll talk about personal measures at the end. Terzepatide could prevent over 45,000 cases of obesity, more than 20,000 new diabetes cases, and over 10,000 cases of cardiovascular disease per 100,000 eligible individuals. But at its current price, it costs nearly $200,000 per quality, which is double the standard cost effectiveness threshold. To be considered cost effective, its price would need to drop by about 30%. Semaglutide could prevent over 30,000 cases of obesity, 19,000 new diabetes cases, and more than 8,000 cases of cardiovascular disease per 100,000 eligible individuals. But at its current price, Semaglutide costs nearly five times the cost effectiveness threshold. For it to be considered cost effective, its price would have to drop by more than 80%. If these medications are so effective, why are they still so expensive? The study points to a few major reasons. First, drug pricing and patents. We all know this. Since GLP-1s are under patent protection, there are no generic alternatives meaning the drug companies can set whatever prices they want, and they're using every legal loophole to extend those patents, delaying competition for as long as possible. Beyond that, there's no guidance by the United States government on drug pricing, period. Second, there's limited insurance coverage. Most private insurance companies either exclude obesity medications or make access incredibly difficult with prior authorization. Medicare still does not cover obesity medications under Part D. Third, PBMs and rebates. Pharmacy benefit managers, or PBMs, negotiate behind the scenes, adding complex pricing structures that drive up costs for uninsured patients. Net prices do not reflect what most patients actually pay, especially for those without coverage. 
So the question becomes, are GLP-1 still worth it despite the high cost? From a pure health perspective, absolutely they are. Lorraine and I are living testament of that. I've lost 34% of my body weight. The study found that GLP-1 significantly increased life expectancy compared to lifestyle changes alone. Trisepatide had the highest life year gains at nearly 50,000 additional years per 100,000 people. But from a cost effectiveness perspective, the current prices simply don't make sense. The high costs wipe out the long-term healthcare savings these medications could provide. If insurers covered these drugs more widely, the overall burden on the healthcare system could decrease due to fewer obesity-related diseases. And that's why the study calls for lower prices and better policies to make these medications more accessible. We all know that Americans are paying more than anyone else in the world for these medications. Policy, law, regulations could dramatically impact this. So what's the solution here? The study suggests four key changes that could make GLP ones more accessible. Number one, lower drug prices. The study makes it clear. GLP-1 prices are way too high for their health benefits to justify the cost. If pharmaceutical companies really want to make a difference in treating obesity, they need to bring prices down. Number two, Medicare and insurance coverage expansion. There are ongoing discussions about including GLP-1s under Medicare Part D, which would be a huge step forward. But without broad coverage changes, these medications will remain out of reach for most Americans. Number three, more transparency in drug pricing. PBMs, insurance companies, and drug manufacturers all have their hands in this pricing mess. Patients deserve transparency in how these prices are set and why they're so high. Number four, policy reforms to increase competition. The sooner we see generic GLP-1 medications, the better, but pharmaceutical companies are fighting tooth and nail to keep their exclusivity as long as possible. Lorraine and I know firsthand how powerful these medications are. As I've said, I've lost 100 pounds on GLP-1s and have completely changed my life. My blood pressure is better, my energy is higher, and for the first time in years, I feel like I'm in control of my health. But the reality is these medications are expensive. And for many people, they're completely out of reach. Lorraine and I believe that every person should have access to these medications at an affordable price if they're prescribed and medically necessary. These medications are life-changing. These medications are health-changing. These medications are life-extending. What do you think? Let's keep the conversation going. Should pharmaceutical companies lower their prices? Should insurance companies be required to cover these medications? Should patent law be changed? Should there be public-private partnerships to help all of these come to market? Let us know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Christopher Drum, and we are The Downsized. <laughs>